Hello from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, wherever you are logging on. Thanks for joining us. I'm Chris Widlick. Oh, he's Chris Widlick. I'm Chris Hagen. <laughs> we had a special guest. We'll introduce him in just a second, Chris. 104th running is coming, what, three days away. One more day of on-track action. Carburation Day, which has a different feel to it completely. No fans, no parties, no drinking, at least not in here. <laughs> but we'll see cars on the track for two hours before the big day on Sunday. Once the show gets going, it will be the greatest spectacle in racing. And now we bring in... Ed Carpenter, the only driver owner in the IndyCar series. You'll roll off 16th, but you've had great success here. Uh, Three-time pole winner, runner-up two years ago. Ed, thanks for joining us here as we go nationwide on the big webcast. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me on, Chris. Chris's. The two Chris's. He's with Look, I'm Hagen. We got that straight now. Uh, it's quiet now. No one's out here. And for the most part, that's the way it's going to be on race day. Can you even imagine how different it's going to feel for you in your 17th 500? I, I mean, it, it's it's so bizarre. I mean, it's been bizarre already, you know, qualifying. There's still an electricity when you're in the car just getting amped up to, to go 230 plus miles an hour. But at the same time, when you're out in pit lane watching and just not having the energy and the buzz of the crowd, it's different. So, you know, I know race morning driving in with, with no traffic is going to be the first signal of just how odd it is. And then coming out for driver introductions where normally we have 300,000 people and having no one here. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be odd, you know. I think in a way it's gonna make it feel even even more pressure packed in a way, just because it's it's just us and our and our competitors. How different is it coming in here, sitting on the pole? You've done that three times, and, and having that whole week to really enjoy things and celebrate things. Has there been a better buzz for you in auto racing than winning the pole here at your home race? No, there's definitely a ton of energy. You know, I, I think it's a huge confidence boost going into the race. You know, I texted Marco, who's who's this year's pole winner, and I'm like, it'll be the easiest start of your career. You know, it just it just is. It's there's nowhere easier to start. No pressure. You can kind of protect yourself. Um, you know, but I've started on the pole three times, started on the front row other times. That hasn't been the winning formula. So, you know, one thing I do know is you can win this race from anywhere. Dario Franchitti was the last winner from 16th position, so hoping to follow in his footsteps. It can when, be you done, about like that, it. when you think about uh, track position is important anywhere you are, but as you said, this is a long race. You don't have to necessarily start up front to win here, and there's qualifying set up, there's race set up, and I know you spent a lot of time in race set up and practice leading up to qualifying weekend. Yeah, we did. You know, I mean, there, typically when your car is good, there's not a huge difference. This year we had a little bit bigger difference between, you know, what how my car was behaving in qualifying trim versus race trim. I've been much happier in race trim. It's a 500 mile race, so you you know we've seen it over over the history of this event. You know, cars have won from from everywhere. So, you know, it's it's not where you are in that first lap. It's where you are in the last 30 laps. And you know, as long as we can get up in the top five for that last 30 lap stint, you know, we'll be we'll be a factor. Ed, for those who don't know, half the field has Honda engines. Half the field, roughly, has Chevrolet engines. And Honda seemed to have the speed qualifying day. They had the the top cars there. It, will there be a difference come race day? Do you guys feel confident that you can compete with the Hondas uh, in race trim? Yeah, 100 percent. You know, I think Chevrolet gives us everything that we need. Um, you know, it, it did seem like Honda came out very, very strong in qualifying. But at the same time, my teammate Renus VK uh, was a top qualifying Chevrolet and, and fourth. So, you know, we felt like as a team we had the speed. You know, we didn't execute on our end in qualifying. You know, I, I really felt like all three of our cars had the speed to be in the top nine shootout. We just didn't execute well enough. You talk about Renus. Uh, Ed, the only driver owner in the series, and so he puts on the owner hat and watches Renus VK go out there in the fast nine. And uh, he'll start fourth, 19 years old, the youngest driver in the field. And can you imagine how far he's come? I know down at the season opener in Texas, he was he was tearing up equipment, but now here he is at the greatest race in the world. He'll start fourth. Yeah, I mean, he it's, it's pretty crazy. I didn't get my start here until I was 22. And he's 19 and fastest rookie in the field so far. He, he's got all the talent in the world. He's really confident in his car. So, you know, I know he's going to be someone that we're going to have to race come Sunday. Um, you know, it's exciting having young guys on the team. For, for me, being 39, not the oldest guy in the field, but <laughs> those young guys keep me, feeling, keep me feeling spry. And, you know, I think we can do something with the United States Space Force car on Sunday. Yeah, the Space Force machine now, last lap. Renus is in first, you're in second. You can't get on the horn and say, hey, team order is Renus. You'll have your time. You're 19. How about letting, letting the boss by? Uh, as, as easy as that sounds, I, you know, <laughs> I have too much respect for, for this race, the history of it, the tradition, and, 
you know, that's not what IndyCar is all about. It's, it's, it's man versus man out there. We're teammates. We help each other get prepared. But come race day, we're, we're going to race each other hard. Hopefully we'll race each other clean, um, you know, but it'll, it'll be me versus him, hopefully, right. and Connor. Chris mentioned you are the only driver owner in, in the series. How difficult is that to separate those two? Do you have to? And maybe what's the, what's the toughest thing going into a race knowing that you're managing the whole team? Um, well, I'm not. I'm not really managing the whole team right now. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm sitting here as, as a driver, and I've got a great, great team of people that, that work at Ed Carpenter Racing, and, and they really pick up the slack and, you know, allow me to focus on my job as a driver, especially during the Indianapolis 500. So, you know, everything that I'm doing, you know, and from my perspective is, is as a teammate, you know, I'm always trying to help help all our drivers and cars, myself included. So, you know, I don't I don't feel like it's as big of a deal here just because I'm focused on on my car and and my teammates and working together as we always do. So, you know, Tim Tim Broyles, our general manager, has been with us since day one in 2012 and, and a lot of our other key key figures in the team. So. They do a great job shielding me from you know anything that would become a distraction. Do you envision a day in the near future where it's just owner? I don't think so. I don't want to push you into retirement. Yeah, I mean, I, I obviously, found, you're very competitive. I haven't found an expiration date on myself yet, so <laughs> you know we'll we'll see we'll see how it goes, and you know hopefully I'll be doing this for a while. If you're just joining us here on the webcast, we've got Ed Carpenter, of course, from Ed Carpenter Racing. He'll roll off 16th this Sunday in the 104th running of the Indy 500. Uh, Ed. Sponsorship is so important in, in motorsport, and you've got one of the coolest ones, a great looking car. How did this whole thing come about with the United States Space Force? Um, I, I would say a, a fair bit of luck, but yeah, it's a real honor to, to repre represent the US Space Force, the newest newest branch of our armed services, and even more so since Connor Daly's number 47 is a US Air Force car. <laughs> so we have the forces with us. We're having a lot of fun, some competitive rivalry bet between those two branches, but it's a real honor to, to represent the newest branch. It sounds like the folks in the Pentagon are pretty fired up about it too, the competition. Yeah, we're, we're fortunately going to have a, have a couple guests with us this weekend. Tomorrow I'm going to get a, take a chance, get a chance to ride with the, the Thunderbirds. Want to, you know, it's more Connor's program on that sponsorship side, but he's already, he's already ridden with them. So they offered me the opportunity. So very exciting. And, you know, normally the, the Indy 500s run on Memorial Day weekend. It's obviously not, but to me, it still still feels like Memorial Day weekend. So to be able to, to represent, you know, an institution as the, the United States Space Force and the United States Air Force, you know, it's a it's a very, very huge privilege for, for myself, Connor, and the whole team. So you go up tomorrow. A lot of times when they get the celebs up there, they try to make you uh, up chuck, um, try to get you sick. <laughs> they don't know who they're dealing with. You'll be fine with the G-Force, won't you? I, I hope so. I mean, it's going to be a new experience for me. I'm used to pulling lateral Gs. <laughs> you know, upwards of four Gs, you know, obviously those planes are capable of pulling more Gs than what we do, and, and they're vertical, so it's a little different G-force than, than what we get on the ground. But I would think, I'd like to think I'm a little more prepared <laughs> physically for it than, than maybe if, if you got See, it. See, I knew he was going to say that. I, I thought you were going to say than most people, but no, you said I'm more prepared <laughs> well, physically than you. Sorry, Chris. Thanks for, thanks for throwing it out there as the nation watches on the webcast. <laughs> Ed, the cars this year have... The new aero screens, we haven't seen them on the oval yet competitively. Uh, I know the drivers told us they add, what, 60 pounds of weight? Yeah, it's about 60 pounds heavier. Uh, tell me the difference. I know it affects the tires and just about everything else, too. Yeah, so our cars weigh roughly 1,700 pounds. You know, 60 pounds may not seem like a lot, but it, it's a when you're going 230 miles an hour pulling three Gs, you know, that's 60 times three. So the weight in the corner is is pretty drastically increased. You know, the tires, we have the same Firestone tires that we ran last year. So, you know, those tires and the downforce we have in the car is essentially the same. So we've got to make up for that lost grip. So we're, we're still trying to figure out, you know, how much of the change in, in handling and the way it feels in traffic, how much of it's due to the, the additional weight. You know, it also has an aerodynamic effect on how you follow and how you draft. You know, so it's still very early days in this. We're learning, you know, each and every time we get on track. So that's why the final two-hour practice on carb day is still still critical because everyone's learning, still fine-tuning, making the cars better to, to get it to do what you need uh, come Sunday. And there's a heat factor for you, too. I know you have a an air hose connected to your helmet, but that can only help so much. Yeah, you know, it's we've we just started with AeroScreen this year. It is much more comfortable in the car here at Indy with the speeds up well over 200 miles an hour all the time. 
you know, than say when we raced at Iowa where our top speed's only 180, you know, so we, the cooling is a lot better here. I'm not as worried about the heat as I am at some of the other races we go to where the speeds are lower and you just don't get as much forced air. And, and also this is a 500 mile race, but it's the straightaways are five eighths of a mile long, each, each main straightaway. So it's not as physically demanding of a race, even though it's long compared to some of our other races where you're physically working harder in the car. Now, usually this week, you'd be out with appearances, you'd be shaking hands, signing autographs, none of that. Uh, and I know it seems odd, but would you have a message for those fans that maybe they've been to 25, 500s in a row, or what would be your message to them as far as, you know, them losing that streak, but still the race goes on? I don't view any of the fans that are missing the race this year. I don't think they should view that their streak has ended. It's, it's out of their control. It's out of all of our control. Uh, you know, but I, I do want you to know that, that all 33 drivers, teams, you know, we miss you all badly here. It just doesn't feel the same. You know, the fans are truly what makes this race special, and we can't wait to have you back. What's it going to take to, to get that checkered flag on Sunday? I know we ask you this every year. Yeah, right? you know, <laughs> I, I haven't been able to answer that question or, right. or put the equation together yet. But, you know, key, key is you got to be there for, for the end. And the field's so competitive now, you really can't make any mistakes. You've got to be perfect all day long, have great restarts, great pit stops, great in and out laps, and, and be able to pass cars on track. So, um, you know, that's what we're striving for. That's awesome. why it's the greatest spectacle in racing. So many variables. Uh, a week from now, we'll be talking about the 104th running. Who knows what's going to happen? I know a lot of folks uh, here and nationwide will be rooting on the United States Space Force machine. Ed Carpenter, number 20. Uh, look for him on track Sunday. We'll be watching as well. In the meantime, we're going to log off now, but we'll be back here tomorrow at 12 noon for Ed Carpenter and Chris Whitlock. I'm Chris Hagan. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.